Hey, so this is the story about my dad marrying me off at 16 years old. Um, I was, I grew up in a real dysfunctional family. Um, my mother and my father divorced when I was really young, like four or five. Uh, and my dad was super duper heartbroken from my, my mom. She used him really badly. I'll tell that story in another video, but my mom was a scoundrel. She was a real scoundrel. Um, she used my dad really bad. She did, she did everything bad, you know, everything bad that you could do to somebody and just rip their heart out and stomp on it. So I think my dad always looked at me and my um, sisters like we were his biggest mistakes because I think looking at us reminded him of my mom and how he gave it his all and it didn't work out and so he was very emotionally unavailable toward us. <sighs> and I very much just felt tolerated, never accepted in my own home. Like I always had to justify my existence. Um, my dad would always say things like, get out of here, kid, you bother me. You know, if you just, coming and asking a question or you know you had to have a reason to be around or in the same room you couldn't just be yourself or relax it was always walking on eggshells so I think that's how my father presented me and my sisters to our stepmother my dad eventually got married again and she uh, treated us terribly. It's a lot of verbal abuse, a lot of just, oh my God, just good grief. If I wasn't comfortable before she came around, <sighs> it was torture when she did. I used to get headaches, migraine headaches every day. As soon as I got off the bus from school and saw the house, it was stressful. Like the doctor put me on medication for migraine headaches in middle school for stress and um anyway so i had an older sister i have an older sister and i have a younger sister and they put us all out at 16 years old um well no that they put me and my older sister out when we were 16 years old and my little sister saw the pattern. And so she begged them, please, cause she knew, you know, she was about to turn 16. She begged them to please let her stay until she finished high school. And then the day she graduated from high school, they sent her packed in a cab to nowhere. My little sister was homeless, sleeping in between video games at Crazy John's on Baltimore Street, where the prostitutes are. That's where my dad sent her. I was the lucky one. I was the lucky one. Um, my oldest sister, from what I know of, she would get boyfriends, and stay with them and then they would beat her up because she they knew she didn't have nowhere to go and we all had it rough we me and my sisters we all had it real rough because you know you get thrown to the wolves at that age and you don't know how to navigate life and you're a girl uh anyway so I had, uh, my older sister got put out and then um, it was my turn. So I, I was 16 and um, one day 
I just had this feeling like something was up. I just I just had this strong feeling like something is going on. My stepmother is acting too weird. You know what I mean? Like she she's up to something. And I didn't know what it was. I had no clue. But I knew that it was it was bothering me so much. And I, I I've never been a a uh, nosy person. Like I'm not the type of person to go through people's things or um snoop around people's houses and all that kind of stuff. Like I used to babysit people's kids and I never would go around. I would go in that refrigerator. I'd go in that refrigerator and I'd I, you know, watch movies and watch the kids or whatever. But um I, I've never been a snooper type of person. Just have never been interested in that kind of stuff. And um but something told me something was up and now I know it was God so I went into my parents bedroom which I never did I went to my parents bedroom and went into her nightstand that was over her side of the bed they had um the headboard of their bed you know just uh it had um cabinets that you know keep their little stuff or whatever right there next to their at their bedside and so um i went in the one over hers and there was a letter all printed nice and neat laid out completely so soon as you open it it is the most obvious thing that you can see and i read the letter it, it was a letter to my dad saying oh i love you so much and our marriage is so wonderful and so beautiful and you're the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life and i would give anything for you and blah 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 but brandy throws a monkey wrench in our whole relationship and i can't take it anymore and if she's not gone by January, then I'm leaving. The next day, I put the letter back where it was. And the next day, when my after my father came home, my dad was a firefighter, so he would work overnight sometimes, days, you know. The next day when my dad came home, he called me downstairs to the dining room. And he was like, you know what, Brandy? Uh, does that boy still want to marry you? Because you, you got to get out of here. You throwing a monkey wrench in this whole thing, this whole family. Used her words. I had been dating my boyfriend at the time since I was 14. He was the only source of love that I had found in life where I could just be myself and he loved everything about me. And so we had planned on getting married when I turned 18. Anyway. And um, of course, my parents didn't know about that. We didn't have the kind of relationship where we talked or discussed anything. If I came to my father because somebody tried to rape me, He would do nothing. He wouldn't comment on it. He was like a mannequin. My little sister, when she had been sexually assaulted, raped by one of our older cousins when she was like seven or eight years old, she was told, shut up, stop lying. You're trying to start stuff. That's, you know, 
that's the kind of household I, I grew up in. So I said, yeah, he, he still wants to marry me. And he was like, well, get the papers, bring the papers and I'll sign them. Cause you got to get out of here. I was so crushed. I was so crushed. I was 16 years old. My daddy was my hero. He was a Marine. He was a firefighter. Like after he got out of the Marines, he became a firefighter. He saved lives for a living. He was this big, beautiful hunk. You know what I mean? Like my dad was fine. <laughs> he still looked good. Um, and when I was younger, I remember him wearing his motorcycle jacket and having his motorcycle boots on and jeans. And he would, I would teach him how to plait hair on a pack of ribbons because he didn't know how to do our hair. He had three girls and didn't know how to do any of our hair. And um, he was my hero. Oh my God, I can't believe this is upsetting me. <laughs> I can't believe this is upsetting me, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I was crushed. I was so crushed. I, could, I was like, Daddy, can't we get counseling? You know, because we had a lot of problems. We had a lot of problems. I'm trying to suck these tears up. <laughs> I got all this daggone makeup on. <laughs> I ain't trying to. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. I'm sorry, y'all. This story, it, this happened a long time ago, okay? You do not have to feel sorry for me. I am so over this stuff. You know, it, it's just really um, pitiful, you know, to, to, to remember, you know, cause I'm going back and, and remember this stuff, but I'm, I'm fine. I am fine. Cause I know y'all are so sweet and I know that you care. Okay. Don't drag my dad in the comments. <laughs> I drug him enough, okay? Don't think that me and my father have not had it out, okay, over the years. And you know, I'm really, really over it, okay? I'm really over it. So, um, yeah. But at that time, at that time, I was completely crushed, completely crushed that he would throw me away. And I knew that he was throwing me away because she said so. You know, I was like, she is a grown woman. She was alive and fine before she ever met you. I am a kid and I need my parent. I only had one good one. My mom was crazy as a damn rattlesnake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, um, it, that broke my heart in a really bad way. So, my boyfriend at the time, he married me um, and um, he was like my knight in shining armor. When my dad treated me like trash and threw me away, threw me to the wolves. Because everybody know this world ain't nice. This world is not nice. You can have a beautiful life. Yes, you can have a beautiful life. But let you be in this world with no money, no job, not even of legal age to get a job. You can't get your own residence. What you gonna do? at 16 years old in this world by yourself, you know? 
that's what happened to my sisters. That's what happened to my sisters. And they still not right. And that 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 breaks my heart. But um Um, yeah, so me and my boyfriend, we went to the courthouse and we got the paperwork, uh, because in Maryland, it's, I don't know if it's still legal, but it's legal, um, for a girl to get married at 16 years old if her parents signed for it. So my dad signed for it. To this day, he denies it. He act, you know, he be like, "Oh, you ran away." Go to the courthouse. The paperwork is still there. I'm not stupid. I remember. But anyway, um, we went to the courthouse and we got the paperwork and we took it to my father. And he signed it. And he sent me out the door. And that was that. I did get married at 16. And um, me and my boyfriend, we had a beautiful relationship. And at first we had a beautiful marriage. Till he started cheating on me like crazy. And then God told me how to catch him cheating. <laughs> that is another story. God actually told me where the evidence was for me to know that my husband was cheating on me because I was so young and I was so naive. But anyway, that's another story. I will... I will just subscribe to the page okay subscribe to <laughs> and you can tap into all these crazy stories of mine um all right so i gotta plug my book the bedroom secrets of an ex-lesbian i wrote a book it's an audio book um i used to be gay for a long time and um while i was gay i learned how to give all my girlfriends at least 10 orgasms in under an hour because I wanted to be the best lover they ever had so that I would never have to worry about them leaving me or cheating on me like my first husband did. And so I learned all those those things about um, delivering massive amounts of pleasure to women. <laughs> um, and then once God delivered me, because. God delivered me from homosexuality. Once he delivered me, I I wanted to get some good out of it. I was like, you know, what good can come out of this? What good can I give to the world um, from this? And just thinking back on my years in that lifestyle, there were a lot of women that became that way simply because they devoted their lives, devoted their time, devoted their love, devoted their bodies to a marriage that was very one-sided and after they gave everything, even in the bedroom, they were not getting satisfied like ever. Like I was with my first husband for four years. I never had one orgasm during that whole marriage yeah you can hear all about that when there's a i did a story time about um uh how god took my gay away and so i go into detail about the things that were happening in the marriage that made me doubt myself to the point where i chose women but um yeah there's a lot of women that are going through that and they chose to become gay because they just got fed up with giving their all and not getting anything in return and not even being able to get pleased at night. Mm. So I was like, you know what? Let me give these things that I learned about 
pleasuring women to men, you know, because I know that there's a lot of guys out there that don't have a lot of confidence in the bedroom because it's intimidating, you know, you might get that performance anxiety, you know, if you're, if, if you don't feel real confident, you know, and that's hard to overcome. And there's just a lot of little things that, um, if you knew them, that performance anxiety, that would go away because you would have confidence now because you don't practice for the game now. <laughs> now you like, put me in the game, coach. Put me in the game. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, two for women, if you have intercourse and intimacy with a partner and you've never had an orgasm or it's very difficult for you to have an orgasm, check out my book, Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian, because I give step-by-step step techniques on how to manipulate the female body those parts down there that are slippery and hard to hang on to and stuff like that you know um so that you can have them fireworks popping off every time every time okay i'm celibate right now but you know when i do every time you understand every time we don't have no sorry sex you know anymore because i know too much and you know once you know then you don't ever have to worry about that either so the link for uh the bedroom secrets of an ex-lesbian is in the description it's on koji you it's an audio book so you can just listen to it um yeah and uh <laughs> get your groove on 